Hey, can we talk about safety for a second? I don't mean the Colorado pass around the wacky tobacco kind of safety meaning. I mean a part of safety that gets passed over sometimes in these conversations. Risk management. I don't hear people talking about that very much. And it's important. I've got some tips for you. How do you know how much danger you're really in? But before we talk about that, I've fallen and I can't get up. And can somebody make winter stop? I'm good. Really. I'm good. Now I said risk assessment. Sometimes this is called job hazard assessment or task hazard assessment, but basically it's a very similar thing. A risk or a hazard is something bad or dangerous that might happen. And when it does, somebody or something might get injured or broken. Now, I care more about people than I do things, so I'm going to focus on the kind of risk that can hurt you or somebody around you. It can also help keep you from breaking a fence or damaging equipment. I climb trees, that's a hazardous thing to do. But you can really apply this to just about anything. These are just sound ideas for hazard assessment. Also, can we be realistic? I'm not a professor, I'm not a certified instructor, I'm just some guy on YouTube. Don't hang your life on everything I'm saying, these are just some ideas to get you started. So this is a really big topic. We could talk for several hours about hazard assessment. Even if we just stuck to the five major points, which are one, identify the hazards. Two, decide who might get harmed and how. Three, evaluate the risks and decide on precautions. Number four, record your findings and implement them. And number five, review your assessment and update if necessary. Those are the five steps. We don't have time for that. So we could talk about all of those things. But again, this is YouTube. And all of us have been programmed to have the attention span of a tree stump. Hey! That wasn't personal. Well, that's bold speech coming from a lazy fat guy. All right, you know what? It was personal. Yeah, you're a tree stump. Hope you rot. So rude. But I don't have time to go over five steps. I don't even have time to go over one whole step. But if I did, it would be step three which is assessing the risk itself. But I do have time to go over two tiny little pieces of that, which is how to spot risks and hazards and how to prioritize them. Here's the key. Something becomes dangerous when you can't see or manage the hazards. Think about that. So before you can assess a risk, you need to know what that risk is. You need to be able to identify it. You need to be able to, to look and say, hey, that's dangerous. I should be really careful here. The primary way you do that is to get yourself educated. Read books, watch videos, take classes, get certified. The best thing you can do is work with people that are knowledgeable, safety conscious, and that have been doing it for a long time so they can show you the way to keep yourself not dead. Makes sense, right? All right, so if you don't know where the hazards are, really about all you can do is either, either one, not worry about anything, do a lot of stupid stuff and get famous for it. Or two, worry about everything in some kind of weird paranoid frenzy. What's that? gotta go change my clothes. Or three, worry about things that aren't important while the real danger comes and slaps you in the face. But how can you tell how risky or hazardous something is? I mean, I guarantee you if you go online right now to one of the tree groups and you ask, is it dangerous to one hand a chainsaw? I guarantee you, there's gonna be some moron down in the comments. Yeah, well, well, it's dangerous just getting out of bed in the morning. But is getting out of bed really the same thing? It, wait, why does the moron need to have a southern accent? Because you, sir, are a southernist.
What? I don't hate people from the South. I lived in the South. Some of my best friends are Southerners. No, sir. I just mean that the quality of this YouTube video is quickly going South. I'm out. Oh. Yeah, you're probably right. Okay, anyway, um, moving on. So, how do you know if something is hazardous? And how hazardous is it? How do you quantify that? How do you put a number on it? Well, I got a solution for you. I made a cool chart. And all you gotta do is give it a number from one to 10 so you can compare the hazards and see, you know, what you should actually worry about. And that is why I decided to call this number Fear Factor. Hey, uh, Mr. Fallen, looks like we just got sued by a TV show. And that is why I decided to call this number Threat Level. Now you can take this chart and you can stick it inside your head for free. But because we're on YouTube and this is my video, I'm gonna do it backwards and I'm gonna put my head in the chart. Hey, look, Ma, I'm educational. All right, but what do these numbers even mean? And what's the red part up there? Well, if you could just shut your hot wing hole for just a minute, maybe I could tell them. So the numbers over here down the side are how likely the bad thing is gonna happen. Five means, oh yeah, it's gonna happen. Four means, mm, probably. And then all the way down to zero, which means, nah, it's never gonna really happen. Then, just give it a number across the bottom for how much damage this bad thing is gonna do. Five means, you're gonna die. Four means, you're probably gonna be permanently injured. And then all the way down to zero, which means, nah, I'm okay. So you just add the two numbers together. So if the likelihood is a five, and the damage risk is also a five, that's a threat level of 10. All right, the next question you need to ask is how can I make this threat either less likely or less damaging to move those numbers back down where you want them to be? This is why it's called risk management because you're managing the risk. You're removing part of it so that it's not dangerous for you. Let's do a really easy example of how to use this head chart we have here, right? Let's say you're cooking some dogs on the grill. Easy enough, right? Not too dangerous. I think we can handle this. But what is the hazard here? Ooh, ooh, I know, I know, it's hot. That's right, Head, it's hot, and you could get burned. But the question is, how likely is that to happen? I think it's pretty likely with those tiny tongs. So, like, a four? Okay, how bad am I gonna get hurt if it does happen? Mm, not too bad, but it's still gonna hurt. I'll, I'll give it a one. So those two numbers together give us a threat level of five, which isn't too bad, but that's not good either. So what can we do to either reduce the likelihood or reduce the damage that could happen? Hmm. Well, we got to get our hands away from the fire. Uh, maybe we can get some longer tongs. Okay. And what would that do to the overall threat level? Well, that would really decrease the likelihood of an injury. Probably from a four down to, I don't know, a one? And that's a threat level of two. I can live with that. Thanks, Head. Anytime, buddy. All right, so using a head chart like this, in your head, is a good way to assess and manage risk. High numbers are bad, low numbers are good. Now some jobs are hazardous. That means you can't always get down to a threat level of zero, and that's okay. Bottom line is work safer, work smarter, Go home to the people that rely on you, the people that care about you, the people you eat dinner with at night. Those people need you. Be there. Reduce your risk. You guys be safe. Wear your helmet. Tree climbing is a dangerous thing. You just never know what's gonna happen out there. The key here is to go low and slow and pay attention to your surroundings. And as long as you pay close attention, it's gonna be a lot safer for everyone. So rude.